So the other day, my aunt brought me some snacks, the yogurt, and the, a bunch of queen, queen cakes. I've eaten them all. There were like six of them. Um, she knows I love queen cakes. So I used to live with her, by the way, sometime before I went to the States many years ago. And so she realized I love queen cakes because she would bring them and I would eat them. <laughs> So I do love queen cakes. How many muffins? They do want to eat muffins. I think me and Mizoya queen cakes here in Kenya. I'm just calling them queen cakes. So this is what I'm gonna snack on on this Sunday afternoon, mm -mm -mm. and then sit outside and listen to my birds. This is life, y'all. Guys, here's one of those things again that looks like a scorpion but moves like a snake and I can't tell you where it came from because the other one died but here's another one this is like I don't even know where the hell it came from look at it so I've managed to push it all the way from here with a broom and it's almost midnight and um the last time when I found that other one here, it was I saw it hiding behind one of these buckets that I have. And so I took one of those, should I say brush brooms, the ones with the little sticks, Makuti sticks. And it came here, like, what do you call it? Is it weaving like a snake, really? And so I had gone outside and gotten one of my buckets the big buckets that i catch rain water with and covered it for a few days and when we looked at it it was dead so since it's about midnight there's no way i can go outside to get the bucket so i was like what will i cover it with and i don't want to cover it with what okay this half water for my bathroom because you know i have plumbing issues in my bathroom so i store shower water bathing water in these buckets and um the other buckets that I have don't have like a nice round uh, rim where if I place them upside down nothing would pass through. So I do have like one bucket for mopping but it doesn't have a perfect round. I feel like if I covered with it or maybe it actually does. I think it does. So anyway I ended up covering that thing that I don't know if it's a scorpion or a milliped, centipede, I don't know. I'm gonna need to google that stuff. But it just looks poisonous, honestly, and deadly. So I covered it with that green uh, bucket cover. It's round, but it's very light. And I wanted something heavy that wouldn't, you know, because it, it might push the light uh, bucket cover and escape. And I don't want it to escape. So I, I couldn't think of anything heavy. I wanted to put this tool upside down, but sometimes I place my jug on there and I'm like, what if you go in a poison enough, you could go through the kifuniko, the green bucket cover, all the way to the wood. So I'm like, no, I'm going to use this inverter because it's heavy and I don't think it can push it and walk out. So I'm going to let it stay there until it suffocates and then it will be easy to get rid of it. And I just can't tell you guys where these things are coming from because this is the second one within a week and I don't know, it's a weird creature. I've seen a smaller version of it in the Shamba and I hear they sting so badly and they hurt and everything. But this one, I don't know if it's the same one, but I feel like it's a different one, a different kind in the sense that these ones are way bigger than the ones that I see in the Shamba. <sighs> and since we started plowing the Shamba, I've not seen with them at all as I go pick my Managu and walk. I don't see those smaller kind that are common in the Shamba. I don't know where they are. But this one, it's so huge. And this is the second one in like a week. And I'm thinking to myself, where the hell are they coming through? You know, because if it's my main door way over there, I have towels there where it rains. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen that in my videos before. If it's my windows, they're usually closed. Although I usually keep my bedroom window open for 
fresh air so i don't know if these things can climb the rough outer wall of my house and then climb up the smooth wind um, glass window and then get into my apartment i mean my house so i don't know my room i don't know where they're coming in from and today i've spent most of my day in the house really just editing videos that are a headache that's why i'm still up at 12 and um because i uploaded one video and then going to play it after like five hours it was it uploaded and then when i clicked play on my youtube channel it didn't have a sound so i had to delete it and restart and the other one kept saying failed metadata all through until now so i don't know what i'm gonna do with that one but it's uploading i haven't even put like a what do you call it a thumbnail for it or any description or title so i don't know if it's gonna give me trouble but anyway yeah i'm glad i stayed up this late because i found it um at the corner of my bedroom door so i'm thinking and okay in this corridor light was on and you can see i've switched off the lights for most of the other parts of the house so i'm thinking it was running away from light and going for somewhere dark but it could have gone to the sitting room because the other one i found it behind the bucket so i assumed it was hiding and maybe it was looking for darkness i don't know where these things are coming from like the door has been closed most of the day the window was open but you want to tell me it can climb even if it has this many legs it can climb through a rough wall and a glass section and also the kitchen door since i use it a lot i usually make sure that i lock it not with a padlock but make sure your are it or congen it when you need the lock is locks it locks cause of the wind sometimes if i leave it unlocked the wind blows it so hard but i've been leaving the door open once in a while sometimes you know you rush you're like ah let it stay open as i pick something and then go out so i don't know if it's that small window of opening that lets them through but guys i don't understand this and you know before i found a small snake <laughs> in my door i don't even know why i'm laughing that's such a sarcastic laugh to be honest i've also found bats in here like this part of narok has some some of the most weird creatures than i've ever seen like i grew up in narok county i grew up in Erigiangare. there we don't even have snakes you know but here i feel like i'm so i feel like i'm in the middle of masai mara like there are so many creatures that i've never never seen in my life Oh boy. So guys, one of my viewers advised me that I should what do you call it? Steam the mboga because obviously when you store it in the freezer um like this when it's raw like the way I've just chopped it up when you eat it it's usually in a you know it's like <laughs> Someone told me I'm, I use Koroga English. Okay, I'm trying to figure this out. It's usually, you know, how should I say? Like a rope. You know, like you're chewing on rope. Uh, it's usually rough and not nice. as the way you'd cook when it's fresh. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I've spared some to cook today. And then this one right here, I'm going to steam it and then freeze it. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll see once I cook it after freezing it, after steaming it, if it's going to be different. So thanks for that tip. Guys, I remember one of my viewers told me instead of storing food in bread bags, the nylon ones, why don't I store food in uh, plastic containers? Funny thing is, I've had these plastic containers since last year, but I honestly didn't remember I have them until I saw that comment. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. So here we go. I've started storing some of the food in plastic containers and actually I steamed these vegetables. This is basically managu, skuma and uh, spinach. And it was also a recommendation from one of my other viewer that instead of storing them straight after cutting them because they'll be too chewy i should steam them so there we go thank you all guys for great recommendations 
guys today i've made a simple meal of just potatoes and uh, beans and you may notice this brown orangish color i'm not huge on spices i don't like spices but i decided to add some garam masala and some turmeric and i also cooked this dish with the goat tarlo ama mafta mbuzi goat fat so it's tasty let me just tell you i remember someone once told me in my comment section to be boiling potato peels to be given to my chicken but i honestly never had a chance to boil them and so jana i cooked some potatoes and decided to throw the peels over there to see if the geese would like them and as you can see they actually like them so because i used to feel like i'm wasting the potato peels i don't have time to boil them so i'm glad at least the geese can be eating the peels so that they don't go to waste by the way guys uh, as you know by now my corn is ready for harvest uh, but basically to eat it as you know green corn it's not yet dry enough for harvest to make like flour and stuff and i like githeri which i've described what it is in my previous youtube videos basically just corn and uh, beans so what i'm thinking of doing because this corn as you see i had tried to eat it today as my ninjoa but has green maize but it's a bit hard for that but still not hard enough or dry enough for flour so what i've decided is i've decided that i'll be harvesting a few corn every day and boiling them uh, you can see it's still green but it's getting now harder to eat as my indinjoa so yeah i'll be harvesting them daily and then boiling a few and i'll actually uh light a jiko one of these days i was busy today doing laundry so i couldn't do all that today but when i have a chance i'll light a jiko and uh, harvest a lot more and boil them in my big sufuria that you've seen before and then i'll be coming and removing the corn from the cob right here and putting it in storage containers like this to put in my freezer so that when the corn season is over when i've harvested all my corn from the shamba i can just be getting some mindinjoa to make githeri with or cook rice with like i did the other day so basically the whole idea is harvest my corn as it's green right now boil it and store it for future use by the way guys as you can see all the poop that's over here this geese um like sitting around here because i think they've realized there's food here like that uh corn trash over there and uh, i usually collect it after some time and go and you know throw the leaves in the banana plant holes because they are quite huge and uh, but i've seen the geese actually trying to eat the these corn leaves uh, the potato peelings like I said earlier and also the the corn the cob the mushakwe when it's still wet like when I've boiled corn and throw it over there they eat that before it's too dry so I'm glad that they are helping me you know eat the waste that chicken for instance wouldn't eat and someone was telling me that these things function like goats and i've seen that's true they actually eat grass and they eat other weeds around so yeah i'm glad i got them i can't wait for them to start laying eggs because i think their eggs would be so nutritious because what they're eating is mostly green stuff as you can see their poop is really dark green because they're eating grass i would say 80 percent of the time uh, so you can see their poop is mostly uh, green in color really dark green and then although i've tried to chase them away from this area they kind of like this area because i've also stored some dry corn that i got from my grannies last year and i've been trying when i get a chance to you know remove it from the cob and give it to the chicken the dry corn uh, so they they also like dry corn by the way so they really realized there's dry corn over there so that's why they hang out here because they feel hapa kuna chakula this food around here um so yeah i've been trying to chase them away they are not so now i have a broom near the door 
so that I can be sweeping because you know I do my dishes over here I do my laundry over here so some I sit here luckily they've not spotted this corner it's still clean so I've um, yeah I have the broom to make sure that I clean whenever I need to stand or use this area um, but the th great thing is uh, when their poop dries but it's not disgusting it's not like even chicken poop it dries up and becomes like almost goat poop like it's only fiber their poop is mostly fiber sometimes I see some white diarrhea but for the most part it's mostly fiber so when it dries up it doesn't bother me so you see like this one here is dry I tried to sweep some of it earlier so it's not disgusting once it dries because it's just dry fiber and they like water and you know I created a pond for them over there I saw them today once over there but for some reason they just like the water in the bucket I don't know why by the way guys this freezer has ended up being one of the best things that could ever happen to me thank you so much to my mom for being thoughtful and buying me this freezer um, I've started uh, storing things in here as you can see the stuff in the plastic bags it's basically beans uh, my granny brought me some beans back in Feb and then they ended up having Bosha the weevils so I realized um, I might as well boil all of them and then store them in small batches for me to be cooking whenever I need them because the weevils you know kind of multiply quickly and I don't like weevils in my food so yeah, I have uh, boiled beans right there here I have some green uh, veggies that I steamed thanks to a tip from one of my viewers that steaming is better when you're storing them and then here I have some extra food that I made jana basically potatoes and uh, beans and those are already cooked so it will be ready to eat and then here today i've put some corn so i'll put that right there so it's actually becoming useful and i'm glad i'm able to start filling it up with food because you know it will save me some cooking time especially let's say i've gone to town had a busy day don't have nothing to eat in the house don't want to cook this might be quite helpful it's becoming handy so yeah this is awesome thank you so much mom for this guys see how nice and blue the sky is looking right now you wouldn't believe that it just drizzled a few minutes ago so you see the area is wet the floor is wet and you see those drops coming from the what do you call those the gutters so yeah it just rained and you wouldn't say i'm even putting on gumboots now it just rained but see those gray clouds on the other side i think it was just a short rain passing by something beautiful about this afternoon don't you think so isn't this paradise on earth <laughs> there's a nice beautiful bluebird there you go i just love this wild flower i wish i would be able to grow it in my homestead I don't know, I don't know if these are the seeds because these are too dry and I should pick like these ones that are not too dry I have no idea I wish it would actually grow at my place, it's so cute I love the yellow, very bright yellow I saw something dark there, I don't know if it's a stick or it's a snake it's not moving I'm guessing it's a stick oh let me show you this guy something the other day I was here see that saliva looking thing right there I was like is that snake saliva my what what is that my green boots <laughs> That's what I noticed when I was filming. I'm like, yeah, let me show you all my green boots. I like them. But by the way, it's crazy to believe that several years from now, this beautiful natural place will not exist. <laughs> there will be a lot of roads and homes and stuff. See this? Is this an acacia tree? Someone... Um, built a beehive there i don't know how they harvest it it looks so high but it's a good idea and it's been there 
for a long time over a year as far as I know and I've considered putting at least one such hive at my place for natural honey because I like honey but it's usually hard to tell if the kind of honey you're getting is authentic or not but yeah I've been considering putting a hive but I'm scared I don't want the bees to like fly away and go to my neighbors and zianze kudunga watu and then kukwena issues but even now they can still fly away from here and actually ghosting someone somewhere but I, a beehive has been something uh, that's been in my head for consideration I love how these purple colored weeds beautify the area So today I've decided to let the chicken out today. You see this one has little cheeks. Um, I don't like letting them out because of the hawks and eagles that could snatch them. My guess is that now that the geese are around, they won't get snatched and they're going near the pond, which my grandma had warned me about. Because once those little ones fall in there, they could drown. At my granny's and even most neighborhoods around here, chicken usually roam free uh, even when the compound is not fenced. But me, I'm scared of the eagles and the hawks that I've seen hang around here before. So guys, today I'm making skuma that I had frozen. It's basically skuma managu spinach kama kawaida. And I had actually steamed them. So someone had advised that it's best to steam them before freezing. So I'm going to cook them and see if I'll notice the difference. If they'll stop being, you know, chewy and fibery. Or some cooking with the goat tallow <laughs> or goat fat. And so, yeah, the fat itself and also the, the fatty meat and the oil is also good tallow. So you can imagine how tasty these uh, vegetables are going to be. If you know, you know, Hama. The mboga was so yummy, by the way, because of the goat fat. And remember the goat fat <laughs> that I made? I don't know why I find it weird saying goat tallow. Uh, that I made, uh, I don't know if it's been a month or so or close to that. It's still here and fresh. I've never stored it like in the freezer or anything. It's always in this metallic bowl that I borrowed. Actually, yeah, I borrowed my granny and then she gave them to me. It's a set of like, I don't know, three, four. So they are always here and I cover them up and nothing has gone bad. Kumbe, when you deep fry stuff, you, they can last long. By the way, guys, tomorrow I'm going to visit my grandmother. She had sent me some stuff to take to her so i decided to harvest some of my best maize uh, in the farm because i'm sure she's curious we chit chat and she's curious you know how grown they are i tell her they're grown so now tomorrow i'm gonna take them to her um yeah but she doesn't have teeth by the way she has all her teeth removed many years ago because they used to ache her and she wanted them all removed. So obviously she can't eat gideri because this it, this maize is not it's it's green yes, but ile mutungo ya maziwe inaisha isha like it's getting harder. It's not as soft as initially when it's green. So I'm sure she, she won't be able to eat them, but I'm sure she'll probably cook for one of her workers or one of my uncles. She actually lives with one of my uncles who's mentally ill. And so, you know, she cooks because he eats at home sometimes. So, whenever he goes home. So, yeah. I'm sure even if she won't be able to eat, she'll cook for someone like my uncle or some of her workers. By the way, nowadays I've been editing my content 
using these prescription glasses that I got uh, when I used to live and work in the States. I think because of staring at the computer all day, working. So, you know, one day I just decided, well, since I have health insurance, let me just go to an, is it an ENT? And, you know, just see what will happen. And my vision was okay, but they still prescribed some uh prescription glasses which i've been using you know when i used to work there but since i've been back obviously i haven't been staring at a computer a lot but now since i'm doing a lot of edits uh, and sometimes just being even on the phone on social media and stuff i've started wearing these uh glasses they're like the blue light that i don't know they're supposed to bring blue light that you know helps your eyes in one way or another but um yeah because i've been feeling like you know sometimes i stare at my phone for so long whether it's editing or just being on social media and stuff and you know i feel like it affects my eyes so yeah i took two pictures of that one with a flash and one without and i couldn't pick which one <laughs> to keep and that's it guys for this video thank you so much for watching i really appreciate your support as always by watching liking commenting sharing and subscribing and i wish you all the best in your endeavors